Hi everybody and welcome to Unit 6 Lesson 9 which is about the U substitution method for evaluating integrals. So today we have one learning target and it is I can use the technique of substitution of variables to find an antiderivative including changing the bounds of integration. So we're going to be learning about a technique, which means it's going to be like a process, a procedure, that will allow us to substitute to find antiderivatives. And we will also, as part of this technique, be changing the bounds of our integral in order to find complicated integrals. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start by reviewing chain rule. And the reason I want to review this is because the technique we're learning today with substitution of variables is a way for us to undo chain rule in kind of a procedural way. So it's a process that we will follow that will allow us to undo the chain rule, especially in cases where the chain rule is hard to recognize. So let's start by reviewing chain rule. Chain rule says that when you take the derivative and you have a function, of x inside of another function, so they're kind of like layers, that you take the derivative by doing the derivative of the outside. In this case, the derivative of cosine would be negative sine. So I'm taking the derivative of cosine, and you leave the inside alone. In this case, that would be 4x. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, which in this case is 4. Now, if I were to simplify this and write it in a little bit of a neater way, I would usually put that 4 instead of at the end at the beginning. So negative 4 and then sine of 4x. So that is an example of a derivative where you need the chain rule in order to find the derivative. Let's look at another one. So for the next problem, it says e to the sine of x power. If you take the derivative, we're going to start by doing the derivative of the outside, which is e. The derivative of e says take the derivative, just copy it. The derivative of e is itself. So e to the sine of x, the derivative is e to the stuff, which in this case is sine of x. Leave the inside alone. Times the derivative of the inside, which would be cosine of x. Now this one, I could rearrange. A lot of times you will see this derivative written like this, where you have cosine of x and then times e to the sine of x power. Looks a little bit neater. Next, if we take the derivative of 6 secant of 4x, then we're going to start with the outside. So the derivative of secant, we're just going to keep the 6 here. The derivative of secant would be secant of stuff times the tangent of the stuff. In this case, the stuff is the 4x. We're just going to leave that alone. Take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside, which is 4. A lot of times when, when you see this simplified, you're going to see that 6 times 4 multiplied together. And so your final answer would be 24 and then secant of 4x and then tangent of 4x. So we'll simplify that by just multiplying those coefficients together. Next, we're going to take the derivative of 1 fourth e to the 8x. So the derivative of 1 fourth e to the something would just be 1 fourth e to the something. In this case, the something is the 8x. And then times the derivative of the something, the stuff, which in this case would just be 8. What you'll usually see is that this is simplified by doing 1 fourth times 8 and 1 fourth times 8 would just be 2. So usually you'll see the final answer as 2e to the 8x. Next, we're going to take the derivative of 2 sine of 6x to the 7th. So if I take the derivative, I'm going to start with the outside. So I'm going to have 2 times the sine, I'm sorry, not sine, 2 times the cosine because the derivative of sine is cosine of, I'm going to leave the inside alone, 6x to the 7th, times the derivative of the inside, which is 42x to the 6th. 
Again, a lot of times you will see this simplified. 2 times 42 is going to give us 84. And then we're going to move the x to the 6th to the beginning. And then you're going to see the cosine of 6x to the 7th at the end. So you'll kind of see a lot of times these chains get simplified. Um, the chain rule gets simplified and we kind of see it in a different spot in the final answer. Last but not least, if we have natural log of 4x to the 5th plus 8x, then the derivative of natural log says we do 1 over the stuff. In this case, the stuff is the 4x to the 5th plus 8x times the derivative of the stuff. In this case, that would be 20x to the 4th plus 8. And a lot of times in the final answer, you will see this written where the 20x to the 4th plus 8 is just on the top. So you'll see the 20x to the 4th plus 8 written on the top of the fraction because when you multiply by 1, you just get the same thing. And then 4x to the 5th plus 8x is on the bottom. Now, there are a couple things I want to point out to you here that we need to see in these problems in order to understand how to undo chain rule. The first thing is, there. if you look at the original problems, there is always an inside function in the original that causes the chain rule to happen. In this case, it's a 4x. Now, if you look at the answer, the simplified derivative, the 4x is still a part of that derivative. And the reason is because the chain rule says take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. So that inside function that causes the chain rule is always still present in the derivative. So this function caused the chain rule. This function right here, the fact that it was e to the something that wasn't just x, caused the chain rule to happen. This function right here, which you can see twice in this problem because it is part of the derivative here has, has two components that both have that as the inside function, caused the chain rule to happen. The, the function right here, the 8x, caused the chain rule to happen. The 6x to the 7th caused the chain rule to happen. And the 4x to the 5th plus 8x caused the chain rule to happen. So when we're trying to undo chain rule, we need to know to look for the thing, the function, the inside that caused the chain rule to happen in the first place. The second thing I want you to notice is that since the chain rule says that the you take the derivative of the outside, you leave the inside alone, and then you take the derivative of the inside, in addition to seeing what caused the chain rule to happen, in the derivative, you can also see the actual chain that it caused. Now chain that it caused, I mean the derivative of that thing I just underlined. So you can see that the derivative of the 4x is right here. It's the 4. That's not very easy to see. Let's try a different color. The derivative of the 4x is the 4. That's why that 4 is there, is that it was the derivative, it was the chain of what caused the chain rule. The cosine of x is right here. And the reason that that's there is it's the chain, it's the derivative of what I already underlined, the thing that caused the chain rule. Now in the next few problems, because we were able to simplify, um, what you'll notice is that the derivative of 4x is just 4. But if you kind of look at the 24 here, this would be 4 times 6. So even though it looks a little different, it's the 24, it's because that chain, the 4, got combined with the 6. The same thing in the next problem. The chain would be 8, but since it's a 2 that's in the answer, you know that it was 8 times something, in this case the 1 fourth, that caused it to look like a 2 because the chain got combined with what was already there. In the next problem, again, it's because um, the chain would be the 42x to the 6th. If you kind of think about where this 84x to the 6th came from, it was the 42x to the 6th times 2. So it's kind of, I like to call that like a disguised chain. It got combined with something else. It doesn't look exactly right, but you can still find it in there somewhere. And then in this problem, the derivative of 4x to the 5th plus 8 is 20x to the 4th plus 8. It's right there. 
So when we have a function where we use a chain rule to take the derivative, we can see two things in the final answer. We can see what caused the chain. We can also see the derivative of that thing. The chain itself is in the final answer. Now that's important because when we go to undo chain rule, because we know that the 4x was what caused the chain in the first place, you'll notice that the 4x didn't change when we go backwards to the antiderivative. It's still a 4x. We don't change that thing. Because we know that the 4 was just the chain, it was just there because we took the derivative, we can ignore it. We don't need to think about it when we take the antiderivative because it wasn't part of the original problem. It was just the chain. Really, all we're doing here is the antiderivative of the negative sign, which is just cosine. So that's kind of the thinking process that we're going to need to have in order to figure out how to undo chain rule. First, I want you to identify the chain, that the thing that caused the chain. In this problem, the 3x caused the chain rule to happen. So that means I don't need to pay attention to that as far as when I'm thinking about the antiderivative because that is just going to be something that was already there from the original problem. The chain itself, so the actual chain, would be the 3. So that is the chain. That means that when I'm thinking about undoing the chain rule here, when I'm thinking about doing the antiderivative, in my head, I'm not going to think about the 3x or the 3 because those two pieces of this problem are only there because the 3x was in the original problem and the 3 was the chain of that thing. That means that in my head, I am just going to be undoing the cosine of something. So I'm kind of ignoring the 3x and the 3. Well, I know how to undo the cosine of something. The antiderivative of cosine would just be sine of something plus c. Now, if I look here, because there was a 3x inside of this cosine, there's going to be a 3x inside of this sine because that's what caused the chain rule in the first place. So first, you're going to identify what caused the chain and the chain itself. And you're basically just going to ignore those things and take the antiderivative of what is still there because those things we don't really need to think about as far as the antiderivative. They're only there because of the chain rule, not because we need to think about their antiderivative. Okay, let's try this again. So in the next problem, I'm going to look and I'm going to say to myself, hmm, because there's a 4x here, I would have used a chain rule. So this is the thing that caused the chain rule to happen. The derivative of that would be 4. So that's where this 4 came from. That is the chain. That means that when I go to do the antiderivative, I can ignore those things. So in my head, I'm just going to be undoing e to the something. Now, the antiderivative of e to the something is just e to the something plus c. In this problem, that something is a 4x, and I'm done. In the last problem here, I can see that this 3x would have caused the chain rule to happen. And the derivative of that would be 3. So what I'm going to do next is look for the 3. Now the thing is, there is no 3 here. But there, that's OK. We're, we know that sometimes the chain is kind of disguised because it got combined with something else. For example, the chain here was an 8, but it got combined with the 1 fourth, and that's why in the answer it looked like a 2. In this case, the chain should have been 3. Since the 3 is not there, we have to think to ourselves, how could the 3 have gone away? Well, to undo multiplying by 3, I need to think, I must have had a divide by 3, or I like to think about that as a 1 third. That 1 third must have been there. to cancel the chain.
So when I'm going to do this antiderivative, I'm going to ignore the 3, ignore the 3x, but I need to put the 1 third there because it must have been there to cancel the chain out in the first place. Now the antiderivative of secant squared would just be tangent. So I'm going to have 1 third times the tangent of something plus c. And that something is going to be the 3x. OK, let's go through a few more examples because I know that this is not easy. So if that was hard, if that was hard for you to visualize and to see where all the moving pieces go, we have a procedure to, to allow us to figure this out without just kind of doing it all in our head. Sometimes it is really challenging to find the antiderivative for a function, particularly when you need to undo the chain rule. In order to make it easier, we can use a process that's called U substitution, and that makes it easier to evaluate the integral. Now this is a procedure and it is, it is lengthy. It's gonna take a lot of steps, but if you are somebody who what I just did made no sense to you and you're going, man, I can't see all those pieces, this will allow you to get the same answers that I just did, but just giving you a step-by-step -step process to get there. So the procedure works like this. First, identify the part of the integral that would cause the chain rule. Just like we did in the other problems, we're going to look for what causes the chain rule and we're going to name that function u. So we're going to find what causes the chain rule and we're going to name that u. Now in this problem, what causes the chain rule is the 2x. And the reason that the 2x causes the chain rule is because if that 2x was in the problem, I would need to multiply by 2. So I'm going to say let's let u be 2x. I'm going to name that u. Next, I'm going to find the derivative of my u. The reason you're finding the derivative is that this helps us figure out what the chain would have been. So just like in the other problems where we said, oh, this would have just been the chain. We just kind of drew an arrow. We're going to formally write it down here. So the derivative of u with respect to x, so du over dx, would be equal to 2. 2 would have been your chain. The next step is that you're going to solve your derivative to isolate dx. Now what I mean is I want to get dx by itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply by dx on both sides. So I have du equals 2 dx. And then in order to get dx by itself, I'm just going to divide by 2. So dx equals du over 2. Now all of this stuff, I generally, I write it like this. I put it in a little box on the side because all of that stuff is like on the side work. This is writing down as a thinking process what was going on in my brain in the other problems. So next we need to change, oh sorry, next we need to substitute. Here's how we substitute. You're going to take the u and you're going to put it in the problem instead of the 2x. You basically want all the x's to go away and you want u's there instead. And you're going to take the du over 2 and put it in the problem instead of the dx. So you're going to replace the 2x and the dx, which means your new function is going to be the sine of u. So you're writing that instead of the 2x. And then the du over 2 instead of the dx. I should have made this green, I apologize. Okay, now the last step, or sorry, the second to last step is you need to change the bounds of your integral. Now when I say the bounds, I mean the lower and the upper bounds into u values. Right now these are x values, x is zero and x is pi over two. So in order to change these into u values, you're just going to plug them into this equation for u. So pi over 2, if you plug it in, 2 times pi over 2 would just be pi is your new upper bound. And 2 times 0 would just be 0 is your new lower bound. So you're changing your bounds. Now I have a new integral where chain rule would never have happened. It's just a u, and we're going to evaluate. So here's how that's going to work. Instead of writing the over 2 over here, I'm going to write this as 0 to pi of 1 half. I'm going to put that at the beginning, sine of u du. 
And then I'm just going to do the antiderivative and plug in the top and plug in the bottom like always. So the antiderivative of sine would be negative cosine plus c evaluated between 0 and pi. And if I plug in the pi, I get negative 1 half times the cosine of pi is negative 1 plus c minus and then if I plug in the 0, I get negative 1 half times the cosine of 0 is positive 1 plus c, which means negative times a negative makes positive. It's 1 half. The c's cancel. And then minus minus makes plus 1 half, and you get 1. And that's a process that will allow you to not do it all in your head, but be able to do step by step to do a u substitution. Now, I do want to make sure that we are all clear on exactly what's happening here. So u substitution is really doing this. If I wanted to originally find the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2x, that would be this area right here. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, I can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to pi of just sine. And that would be right here. I'm sorry, 1 half sine. This should say 1 half sine. The graph is correct. The equation was just typed wrong. What this is saying is that this original area that I was looking for is the same size as this area that I found here. It's just two different functions that we have the same area for, and this function happens to be easier to find the antiderivative, so that's the one we're going to work with. Okay, let's go ahead and do a few examples. Now what we're going to do for each of these examples is we're going to do it without u substitution, where I'm just going to show you kind of here's how you think about it, and then we're going to do it with u substitution, where I'm going to show you, okay, and here's how you can do it if you want to follow a step-by-step -step process. And what I want you guys to see is that we get the same answer either way. So you, without u substitution, if I wanted to do this first problem, the first thing I'm going to do is actually copy the problem because I just want to be able to underline some stuff without writing on the original. The first thing I would do is I would identify what caused the chain rule. Now what caused the chain rule here was the cosine. And what is the chain? Well, the derivative of cosine would be negative sine. So I noticed, hey, I'm missing a negative here. Well, if a negative canceled somehow, then it must be because there was a negative in the original problem because a negative times a negative would make that positive. So how do you undo a negative times something? You just have another negative, it makes it positive. What that means is that instead of really doing this integral, what I can do in my head is I can think to myself just the integral from 0 to pi of negative e to the something dx. So that's what I'm going to think in my head. Now the antiderivative of e to the something would just be e to the something. So I would have e to the something, and I would have the negative. And the something here is just going to be cosine, because if that's in my answer, then that would have been part of my original problem. So I'm going to put my plus c, and I'm going to evaluate between 0 and pi. First, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my pi, which means I get negative e to the cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1 plus c minus negative e to the cosine of 0 is 1 plus c. So I get negative e to the negative 1, the c's cancel, plus e to the 1. Okay. Now let's say I do use a u substitution. Let's say like figuring out this whole, this was what caused the chain, this was the chain, here's what you were missing, was way too much. That was too much to do in your head. We can follow our steps for u substitution. Step number one is to identify what causes the chain. And we're gonna call that u. Now the same thing causes the chain here. So we're gonna have cosine of x. Step number two is, take the derivative to identify the chain. So du over dx would be negative sine. 
Step number three would be solve for dx. So I'm going to multiply by dx to the other side. And then I'm going to divide in order to get dx by itself. And this is all kind of, this is what I did in my head in the other problem. I'm just writing it down here. Now I'm going to change my integral. So I would have the integral from, now I need to replace my bounds. So I'm going to take the pi and plug it in here. Cosine of pi would be negative 1. And then I'm going to take the 0 and plug it in here. And cosine of 0 would be 1. Now you'll notice negative 1 and 1 came up in this problem as well. We ended up doing cosine of pi and cosine of 0 there as well. Then I'm going to have to replace what was in the original problem, all the x's are going to become u's. So I'm going to have sine of x times e to the u, because I decided u is going to be cosine. And then dx is going to change to du divided by negative sine of x. Now, if you look at this new integral, because there's a sine of x here and a negative sine of x here, those things are going to cancel and you're just going to have that negative. So my new simplified integral would be the integral from 1 to negative 1. When you divide by a negative, it just becomes a negative number, e, negative e to the u du. The antiderivative of e to the something would just be e to the something. So I'd have negative e to the u plus c from 1 to negative 1. I would plug in my negative 1 first. So I'd have negative e to the negative 1 plus c minus, I plug in my 1 next, so negative e to the 1 plus c. The c's are going to cancel, and we get negative e to the negative 1 plus e to the 1, which is the same answer we got last time. <clears throat> now I want to point out a couple things to you. First of all, here we plugged in the pi to the cosine and the, and the 0 to the cosine at this step. Here, we plugged in the pi to the cosine and the 0 to the cosine at this step. We just changed the bounds. Here, we had to think to ourselves, hey, there should have been a negative. There wasn't a negative, so I need to multiply by a negative. And here, by dividing, we get that negative in the problem. We still get that negative. You'll notice that this looks a lot like this. Here, we end up with the exact same expression that we did here because at that point, you've done everything that u substitution was supposed to do to make the problem easier. You're just plugging in your numbers. And the final answers do end up being the same. So these two processes do the same thing. You end up with the same answer. It's just what you're more comfortable with that you get to choose which one you like better. For the next problem, let's do this without u substitution and then also do this using u substitution. So let's talk about without u substitution. First of all, I know that I'm, I'm going to copy the problem. I apologize um, that I didn't think to put this in the notes, but I do think it'll be easier if we can kind of draw on the problem so we can see where all these pieces are going. 2x squared plus 1 squared dx. Okay. First, I'm going to think about what caused the chain rule. Now, the thing that causes the chain rule in this problem is the 2x squared plus 1. And I know that because that is a function that is inside of another function. It's inside of the squared. Then I need to think, what should the chain be? Well, the derivative of 2x squared plus 1 would just be 4x. So this 4x is just the chain. That means that if I want to do the antiderivative, I can just ignore both of those things. And I can just think about this as something as 1 over something squared. So in my head, I'm really just doing this, 1 over something squared. Now, for me, I prefer to think about that as something to the negative 2 power. That's just my preference. I handle that better when I'm trying to do the antiderivative than I do when I have fractions. So the antiderivative would just be, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, so it's going to be something to the negative 1. And then I'm going to put a plus C and evaluate that between negative 1 and 2. My something is going to be 2x squared plus 1. And now I'm just going to go through and plug in the top and plug in the bottom and simplify. Now if I plug in the top number, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 
And to the negative one power just means it goes in the denominator. So it's one ninth plus C minus, if I plug in negative one, I get three. So it's one third plus C. The C's cancel and I get one ninth minus one third, which is really three ninths. And so one ninth minus three ninths is negative two over nine. So that's how I do it. That's with uh, just kind of visualizing which parts you can ignore and then doing the antiderivative. Now, if you wanted to do this using U substitution, your first step would still be to identify what caused the chain. In this case, it would be the 2x squared plus 1. And then you would still take the derivative to figure out what the chain should have been, which means you would get 4x. You'll notice that's the same thing I did here. This is a cause of the chain. This is what the chain should have been. Now I'm going to solve for my dx. Now I'm going to do this by just multiplying and then dividing in my head. So I'm going to have dx equals du divided by 4x. And that's kind of like the pre-work, the setup, before you actually do the problem. So now I'm going to have an integral from, I'm going to take the 2, and I'm going to plug it in here. And 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And I'm going to take the negative 1 and I'm going to plug it in here. And negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Now you'll notice the 3 and the 9 are the same numbers we got here, the 3 and the 9 when we simplified. So now I'm going to have um, 4x divided by u squared because my u is right here. And then I'm going to have times du divided by 4x. So the 4x and the 4x are going to cancel. Just like over here, I said, oh, you can just ignore the 4x. Here, I'm literally just crossing them out to show that I'm ignoring them. So my new integral is going to be the integral from 3 to 9. And I'm going to rewrite this as u to the negative 2 power. It just makes it easier for me to do the antiderivative. Now, the antiderivative here would be u to the negative 1 power and then divided by negative 1. Oop, I'm so sorry. I forgot that over here. We have to divide by negative 1. Oops. So this would be negative 1 ninth plus 1 third, which is positive. There we go. Positive 2 ninths. That's my bad. I'm so sorry about that. Um, and then plus c. And we're going to evaluate between 3 and 9, which means we're going to get negative 1 over 9 plus c minus negative 1 over 3 plus c. The c's cancel, and we end up with negative 1 ninth plus 3 ninths, which is 2 ninths. And we get the same answer either way. Okay. Let's do one more example. So let's say I want to integrate from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4 of cosine of 2x. Here's how I would do this. I personally would go, OK, and again, I'm going to copy down the problem. I personally would go, this caused the chain rule. The chain should have been 2. However, since there's not a 2 there, I'm going to need to put a 1 half to cancel it out. So, because 1 half times 2 would be 1, so there wouldn't be anything there. So what I'm really trying to do here is the integral from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4 of 1 half cosine of something. That's kind of what's going on in my head. Which means the antiderivative would be 1 half times sine of something plus c. And that something would be 2x. And I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that between negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4. Now, when I do that, I'm going to get 1 half times, when I plug in pi over 4, 2 times pi over 4 becomes pi over 2. So I'm trying to find sine of pi over 2, which is 1, plus c, minus, I'm going to put the 1 half, and sine of negative pi over 2 would be negative 1, 
plus c, which means I end up with 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. Now, if I wanted to do this exact same problem using u substitution, first, I would let my u equal the thing that caused the chain rule, so 2x. Then I would take my derivative, so du over dx is equal to 2. And then I would solve for dx. So in this case, I'm going to multiply by dx and then divide. So du divided by 2 equals dx. And then I'm going to set up my new integral. Now you'll notice those three steps basically do exactly what I just did here. I found the 2x, I identified the chain, and then I noticed that, hey, you're going to have to divide by 2. You're going to have to have a 1 half because the chain wasn't there. So I'm going to integrate from, I'm going to plug pi over 4 into here, and that's going to give me pi over 2 here. I'm going to plug negative pi over 4 into here, and that's going to give me negative pi over 2 here which if you remember, we said, hey, if you plug pi over 4 in, you get pi over 2. So it's the same thing. And then we're going to go ahead and substitute. So we're going to have cosine of, it'll be u instead of 2x. And then times, it's going to be du divided by 2. Now this time the 2 doesn't cancel anything. So that's where we know, like in this process, that there's going to be a 1 half here. I'm just moving the 2 to make it a 1 half. Now the antiderivative of cosine would just be sine. So I'd have 1 half sine of u plus c between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And if you plug those numbers in, you get 1 half times sine of pi over 2 is 1 plus c minus, if you plug in negative pi over 2, you get 1 half times negative 1 plus c. And so you end up with 1 again because the c's cancel and a half plus a half makes 1. All right, the last thing that we're going to do here is write an equivalent representation of the definite integral and see which one of these is equivalent. Now, this is a very common multiple choice question that you're going to see because what they're trying to see is do you understand like what you can ignore and what you have to pay attention to. So in this problem, the only way to really figure out which of these is equivalent is to use a u substitution to go from here to here. So in this case, I would go, okay, my u is going to be x squared because that's what causes the chain to happen, which means my du is going to be 2x. And then I'm going to solve for my dx. So du divided by 2x is going to be my dx. And this is all kind of stuff that's happening on the side in a way. So I'm going to have the integral from my lower bound when I plug it in is going to give me a 1 here. And my upper bound when I plug it in is going to give me a 9 here. And so then I'm going to have 2x times the cosine of u. times du divided by 2x, which means the 2x's cancel. So we just have the integral from 1 to 9 of 1 half cosine of u, I'm sorry, not 1 half, of just cosine of u du. So let's see which of these matches. Oops, it's going to be b. Okay. That is an example of a multiple choice question where you might need to use a U substitution process in order to figure out which of these is equivalent. All right, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for some practice.